Hey there to my 50 subscribers, my future subscribers, and all the people that secretly watch me without subscribing. Uh, today I'm going to be making some rainbow jello. Um, there are, are a few different ways that I've seen people do them. Most people, they they do the colors, but they do like a, a white layer in between, which is plain gelatin mixed with canned milk. Um, and I've done it before where every other colored layer I used canned milk to give it a creamy texture in between and during those times I did seven layers but um, I don't remember which colors I added to make the color that goes between the purple and blue and I don't want to sit there and experiment ahead of time to figure it out because it's been a while um, in an ideal world, I would have had a bunch of these cups that are really pretty. Um, that's what I have always used, or at least for a long time, for many, many years. But they're no longer available, and I've only got six left. So I went and bought these jars. They're like mason jars, but there's no writing on them. They hold more. Um, but I didn't want to buy too many, so I got eight of them. And then whatever's left over, I'll put in these other cups just to kind of set aside if somebody doesn't want rainbow and they just want plain jello. Um, anyway, uh, so right now I've got a pan on the stove uh, to try and boil two cups of water. And we will start with the grape because we want purple on the bottom. Make sure you have an entire day set ahead for this. Um, I made a mistake and I waited too late in the day to start. So this will be finished probably around midnight. <laughs> And it looks like the water's almost done boiling. Um, when you do this, each layer should sit in the fridge for like two hours to make sure it's nice and cool. Um, that way the colors don't mix. Um, you know, and one layer doesn't damage another. Uh, you want the layer set each time. Um, all right, looks like the water's boiling. These are the six ounce boxes of Jello. So we're gonna do the first two cups. And you gotta stir it until it's really well dissolved. Um, we'll go ahead and add in two cups of cold water, as cold as you can get it. Sorry about the little inter break there. Um, I had a message. Anyway, I poured two cups of cold water in this. Mix it again for a minute. And I pre-measured to see how much I could fit into each of these cups of each jello to make the layers even. Uh, these are 16 ounces, so we're going to go with a third of a cup. I hope I got that right and I didn't get confused. If I'm confused, well, we'll find out. So we just put a third of a cup of Jello in each one of these jars. And then I'll see if I can fit the rest of this into one of these cups. But I probably do it over the sink, so you won't see me. But I'm still here doing it, I promise. Oh, and that barely fit. Okay. So 
there's that much left over. I probably should have just bought a couple more glass jars, but that's okay. This is what we're doing right now, and um, I'll be back in two hours. Okay, on to Jello number two. We're doing Berry Blue. The store stocked it just because of me. Um, I haven't been making it for a while, and they still stock it, so that's good. I guess other people have decided to use it. Okay, so we mix two cups of hot, boiling hot water for 30 seconds. Now we add the cold water, two cups. Just mix it a little. And then we put a third of a cup in each one of the jars. And then we pour the rest of it in a separate cup for later for someone else. And that's the end of the second layer. All right, so we're getting ready to do the third layer, which is lime. My camera looks funny to, for some reason. Again, boil two cups of water to put in this. And then stir for 30 seconds. And then add two cups of cold water, as cold as you can get it. Stir it just a moment. And then add a third a cup to each one of your jars. And then pour the rest into whatever container you have. That's all of layer three. Be back in two hours. All right, so now for layer number four, we have lemon. two cups of boiling water into the jello mix and stir for 30 seconds now for two cups of water as cold as you can get it let's mix it up a little Add a third of a cup to each of the jars. And pour the rest into another container. And that's the fourth layer. I'll be back in two hours.
Okay, now we're on to uh, layer uh, five. We have orange. And then we take two cups of boiling water. And stir it in for 30 seconds. And then we add in two cups of the coldest water we can get. Stir it just a little bit. And again, add a third of a cup to each one of our jars. And then dump the rest of the jello in another container. And that is the fifth layer. Be back in two hours. Okay, we're here to start the last layer, which is raspberry. Um, and of course, this one I will, we don't have to let it sit for two hours because we're just gonna forget about it till tomorrow. If that makes sense. That was probably an unnecessary comment, but I said it anyway, so it is what it is. So we add two cups of boiling water. And stir it for 30 seconds. Okay, so after we stir it for 30 seconds with the two cups of hot water, we add two cups of the coldest water we can get. Stir it for just a moment. And then add a third of a cup to each one of these mugs or jars. And then pour the rest of it into another container. And that is the sixth layer. Tomorrow I will show you what they look at close up and um, clean up the outside of the jars so they're not sticky as well as the thing they're sitting on and put the lids on them because these particular jars came with lids which is nice makes it easy to transport them although they are really heavy just so you know doing this is a really heavy thing so um, I'll show you what it looks like tomorrow thought I'd come on here and show you what the jello the rainbow jello looks like um, I'm not sure how well that shows up on the camera but you can see how the colors blend together that's why I don't like doing the white layer in between because it looks more like it blends in rather than a sudden start and stop and um, yeah they're pretty and I just got to get the outside of the jars cleaned up and get the lids on them and we're done. Okay, so let them know what you're making. I'm going to be making jello pinwheels. It's a combination of jello and marshmallows that you roll together and then you cut it up and then it makes a little cute pinwheel looking snack. My brother loved them when I made them the first time. However, that's been a while. So, I had to refigure out how to do this. So what you're going to need is, um, well, what you're going to need is either a cookie sheet or a brownie pan. It depends on if you're using the small gelatin box or the large. If you're using the large one, then it's perfectly okay to use something like a cookie tin. Because we found out that if you use a small one with a typical cookie tin, the jello is too thin. And that's not what we want. 
So, since we're using the large one, we're going to have to double the ingredients. So, in this case, we want one big box of the jello, the jello gelatin, um, a cup of boiling water, and three cups of marshmallows. I recommend going with the small ones, they melt faster. Also, we don't have a microwave, so that's even better. <laughs> Um, just go ahead and put the gel in there and I'll give you the boiling water. Yes. Before the water boils away. It's trying to flee. I turned it off because I don't want it evaporating. That's right. And we're going to go ahead and mix the gelatin. Oh, that smells nice. The gelatin with the hot water. And it's going to be one cup of boiling water. And then we want to mix it in very, very well. About 30 seconds. Yeah. Just be careful not to splash yourself. Splashing yourself with boiling water is not exactly fun. Especially when it has sugar in it. Yeah. What are these weird crystals in your skin? They're sugar! <laughs> Wait, does that mean the person it splashes on is extra sweet? Maybe. Add a little sweetness added. Okay. Looks like there's no chunks or anything, so we're gonna go ahead and start adding the marshmallows. Get into the bowl. That's three cups of marshmallows. What this color makes it reminds me of painted fruit. Oh, I totally forgot. This is Jocelyn doing this. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> we, we're both kind of airheaded. Our bad. It's late. Yeah. It's after midnight. <laughs> yeah. Um, usually, if you have a microwave, then don't use a metal pole. And you can stick the marshmallows in the microwave or the whole concoction in the microwave for about 30 seconds at a time, mix them 30 more seconds until it's, until all the marshmallows are melted. But since we do not have a microwave, if it cools off too soon, we're going to have to like MacGyver something interesting with another pot. To heat it up from the outside, it works. How's it doing at the moment? Um, it's Getting there. Yeah, they're mixing in pretty well. We should probably use that pot after all. You want? Yeah. So we're going to use another pot with boiling water. To here's that because you're gonna need that to keep this consistently melting until all the marshmallows are melted. We don't want it solidifying until it's completely mixed. I'm very good at it. I'm like, oh, I need to wash my hands. Turns on only the hot water. Immediately regrets it. Do I learn my lesson? No, of course not. So the next time, it's like, oh, I need to wash my hands. Turns on the hot water. Ow! <laughs> Every time. My sister affectionately calls me an idiot. And that's fair. Yes, they're melting. You might want to explain what we just did with the water there. Right, so we don't have a microwave. So the next best thing was to boil some more water and then stick the metal bowl that we're using into that water after it's after it's been boiling. And it heats up the outside of the bowl, which it heats up the inside of the bowl, which means we win. <laughs> because yes. Why does the black cherry always smell so nice? 
because they just, you know, make it smell really strong so people will want it. That's fair. Kind of reminds me of the lollipops, the dum-dums. Yeah. So good. So small, still good. You can tell they're almost all the way mixed in. Almost all of them are all the way melted. You want to melt this as long as our patience will go. <laughs> Which may be short this late at night. <laughs> yeah. But yes, you don't want to leave it sitting still too long because you don't want to risk it setting in a in like like this because the marshmallow will separate from the jello and settle on the top. And if it's not where you want it to be yet, then that's gonna kind of ruin your plans a bit. But what we'll do is we'll pour it into this cookie sheet right here and then stick it in the fridge for about 45 minutes to let it cool, not, cool off enough so that we can roll it and cut it into pinwheels. Or just swirls, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> I just realized you could technically call them little jelly snails. <laughs> Make little heads and put them on them. Yeah. Maybe we could add like a marshmallow after we're done with them. Just let the end of it stick out a little so you can just add it. Mm little head is poking out it's like here you go here's your snail <laughs> and it looks like it's melted there's a couple little spots it's like well we don't want to melt well that's too bad because we need to grab that don't burn yourself pulling in the bowl out of there i did not do that tall enough not enough water to pull it out safely. Huh? Um, could I have another... Because I didn't add oh. as much water. I see. Do you have another... Um... Oh, you're going to do that way. Please don't burn yourself. Why would I burn myself? No, don't do that. Grab it. With the... No, with your fingers. But... <laughs> I can grab better with my fingers. And burn myself, but you know... I always do that. And we're going to want to protect our fingers before I get yelled at. <laughs> and go ahead and pour it into the tin. It may pull the wax paper closer, but that's okay. It's just attaching itself and saying hello. Try to get it evenly spread out. Get it to try to reach all the corners. And then we get to stick it in the fridge for 45 minutes. Like. Now we're back for the jello pen wheels and you saw nothing. Um, you're gonna see little bits of marshmallow here and there. Don't worry about it. It's all marshmallow. Um, what we're going to do is lightly cut around the edges. Oh, it's heavy. Of course it's heavy. It's twice as big. Uh, anyway, so we're gonna cut around the edge to separate the marshmallow from holding onto the wax paper. And if that goes according to plan, then we can roll it up and then cut it and stick the pieces in here. Now, if I did this more often, I might have even had powdered sugar to put on the edges so it doesn't stick so much. But I don't. So we're doing the next best thing. You want to make sure that you do not cut your pans because those can get expensive. 
So I'm going to start cutting along the edge and seeing about green. Um, if you're lucky, you'll see a layer of jello. Hopefully it's nice and thick because that's exactly what you want. Because if it's not thick, then it just ends up a marshmallowy mess. <laughs> Edge of the. I can't see it from the angle they're at. <laughs> I know. Okay. You can like look to see if you can see a layer of gelatin. In this case, you can. It's the dark red here. That's a very good sign. That means that you most likely can roll it without getting super duper sticky. Be be warned, however, you're still going to be sticky. Very sticky. Um, you want to have a dish with wax paper to the side so you can actually have somewhere to set the finished pen pinwheels or swirls or whatever you want to call them today. Just so, you know, they don't stick to your good dishes. Or the paper plates, because that would be bad. Because then you couldn't eat them. Not, at least not without getting super duper messy. Okay. I'm going to use the knife very, very carefully. To lift up the edge. In the back of the knife, maybe. want to carefully start rolling it. Thankfully, once you start rolling it, it starts to more or less stick to itself rather than the wax paper. Times like these, you wish you had a third hand. Would you like me to tape the wax paper down for you? Yes, please. Thank you. Yeah, I'm trying to give you an extra hand. I mean, it definitely counts. Thank you. I mean, once you can start going, it just goes pretty well on its own, honestly. I think you're going off the edge there, though. Yeah, it's because it uh, folded a little when it was cooling. A little crooked. I think the, my left side has a little less jello. Wow, that's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Oopsie. <laughs> Maybe should have rolled it in uh, the other direction. That's okay. Cool. Okay. Oh yeah, the right side's darker, huh? Yep. Okay, what do you need me to do? Um, could I get another piece of parchment paper to roll this onto, off the edge? The wax paper? Yes. Did I say parchment paper again? Yeah, that's alright. Whoops. How big do you want it? Um, square. Okay. 
And that way I can pull this this way. Yeah. Oh. oh well, fell apart at the end. That's okay. It'll still taste the same. Yup, and then we can just snap on that. <laughs> I guess that's your way to keep it. Snack, snack, snack. I'm gonna rinse my hands real quick because all my fingers is very, very sick. Nothing more water won't fix. So, this can be a bit of a pain because that's a little bit big. My bad. But, cut the messy end off first. You didn't quite get it all off. I know. Technically, we got our first pinwheel. It's the messy end, though. Don't worry too much about that. <laughs> but what you want to do is just work on cutting it evenly. Which means it'll be a slow descent down, but it'll get there eventually. Just like that. See? That's an even bigger one. And you can make them thick, you can make them thin, whatever you want. Do you want to give a close up to the camera and then we'll cut the camera? Sure. But yeah. And like I was saying, you could add powdered sugar to the side so it doesn't you stick to things jump. as much sorry and that's what it looks like and it's and you let it dr if you let it sit in the fridge a little longer after this then it actually ends up not being nearly as sticky but still really good uh -oh, I'm sticky again. and you just go through you cut that off you can eat the non pretty ones so nobody sees them <laughs> And nobody will be any the wiser. But yeah, if you add powdered sugar to the pinwheel sides, maybe around it, confectioner sugar, whatever you want to use, you know it's the same thing. Um, might make it a little less sticky. But for the most part, it's sticky and half fun. Okay, we're back with Jocelyn and she's going to show you how to do something else. I like to call this one fluff salad because it's got jello, it's got pudding. It's got fruit and a whole lot of marshmallows and whipped cream because you can't go wrong with whipped cream. So what we need is a container to mix and store the fluff in, hopefully with a lid so you can cover it for the last half of the steps. And then you're going to want, in this case, the large um, jello flavor that'll go with vanilla and a fruit of your choice and the best jello to, that would work with this would probably just be the vanilla unless you want to go strawberry to strawberry but that's different and in this case we're going to have two cups of marshmallows and two cups of blueberries so cut them in half so you're also going to need two cups of boiling water and two cups of cold water I probably should have boiled the water before I started the camera. That's okay. You can just look at how nice and how nicely kept this bowl is. I, I've done some mixing in it. Yup. <laughs> That's how you know it's a good one. It's Rubbermaid. Yes. Rubbermaid has the best stuff. Well, you can always dump the jello mix in there. Let's me go super duper slow. It takes a little longer for two cups to boil. The very first step, well, the very first half of this is literally just making jello. Look how blue it is! 
the flavor of blue. I don't remember what flavors are actually in the berry blue. Well, on, on this box, there's blueberries and raspberries. So I'm guessing it's something like that. I know it always it's works really blue. good on the berry, berry blue. Works really good on the rainbow jelly. Yes. Sorry, I didn't get to start at first. That's <laughs> okay. Nobody's going to see me eat this. I can always fast forward part of it. <laughs> or cut a little piece out while we wait for this to boil. It's going to boil like a second time. I'm surprised. Is marshmallow beer better than the freaking uh, main brand ones? Watch Shane Duffy's video on how the brand stuff and the generic stuff are the exact same thing from the same factory. It's a lot of money. It's like Skyler likes to make people wait. Now it's like Kendra likes to make people wait. <laughs> it's like, hey, I need your attention, sis. Three days later. Eh. <laughs> no, I needed your help. Come back. Okay. Is a slow boil good enough? Yeah. Right. There you go. Okay. So we got the gelatin in the bowl. And now we're going to add the two cups of boiling water. Please be careful. Don't hurt yourself. And you're gonna want to mix it until you're not meeting any resistance. So there's less likely to be, you know, clumps of mix. Cause that'd be a little weird. Most people usually use a whisk. I don't own one, I don't think. I have a really cool one. It's coral colored and it's silicone and it's so soft. And so easy to clean. Okay, that looks like it's all mixed together. So we're gonna add the two cups of cold water now. Finish mixing this. And now we stick it in the fridge for 15 minutes. Okay, we're back 15 minutes later. We're going to do the next step, which is really quick. Just mixing the pudding into the already made jello. And then putting it in the fridge for 15 minutes again. But this time we're gonna cover it. So let's go ahead and open this with no nails. Do you want me to open it? <laughs> I got it, I swear. A second and get to mixing. Try not to make too much of a mess. I hear I thought you were trying to make a mess. It looked like it. Gotta splash in it a bit, you know? Don't you want to be splash by congealing um, jello? Sure. That doesn't break up very easily, does it? Nope, that's usually where whisks come in handy. Fork? Yeah, we have fork. Come back here. I need you into the pot. Pot? Let's go. 
I mean, we could use a mixer, but it makes a big mess. <laughs> Might Me personally, to. something like that, I would stick in the ninja. You might have to have a whisk or a mixer. You could put it in the ninja and then just mute it for a second. Because, <laughs> you know, the ninja is the loudest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. Besides a jackhammer. Okay. Keep in mind, since the liquid is cold now, it's a lot harder to mix it in. So what is the reason for not putting the pudding mix in when it's warm? Because you want it to start solidifying before you add it in, otherwise it might completely disrupt its solidifying. But if you wait too long, then it'll be too solid. At least, that's my theory. All these little pieces. I might have to smush them up after 15 more minutes. Well, if you want, we could put it in the Ninja. The regular Ninja, not the little cup. Okay. We're cheating. We're cheating. It's late. We don't want to be here all day. So we're cheating. Might want to do it over the sink, though. Probably a good idea. And hopefully the neighbors don't get too mad. I am entertaining that it is green now. Sure that worked. Woohoo! Only took a couple seconds, which is good because I don't want to make the neighbors mad. Um, take that. I don't want this thing. I will clean this after we turn the camera off. Okay. Okay, it's all mixed together. I'm gonna strip the edge down real quick though because there's a couple pieces. Should I have waited? Nah. To dump it in? At least that's not wasn't as loud as using the smaller one. Yeah. I don't know why the smaller cup is so loud. When it's mixed properly, you'll feel like it you it's got a little bit of drag, so it's some weight behind it. That's a good thing. Okay, now that's all mixed together, we're gonna put it back in the fridge for 15 more minutes. Hi, we are back 15-ish minutes later for the fluff salad. Um, what, we're, what we're going to do now is add blueberries, marshmallows, and whipped topping. Now, I don't remember if its consistency is supposed to be this thin still, but it has only been 15 minutes. But we're still going to mix the stuff in and then set it to set it in the refrigerator for two hours. You know, like you would for Jello. Um, I'm going to add one thing of whipped topping before I add a second one because if it's enough with one, then we don't need to use the second one. Um, 
size of container to through the eight ounce containers. Sure. We'll see if it's if eight ounces is enough. I mean, theoretically, it should be, but you never know. So I'm gonna mix in the marshmallows first, and then the blueberries, and then the whipped topping. And you just want to keep mixing it in with it itself, with each thing, because you know it's supposed to be mixed together. But you know, don't be like super duper rough and everything. This is one of those things where you uh, fold the ingredients in. And I'm gonna add the blueberries. I chop them in half because I can. It was very hard to not eat them all while I was cutting them. But I managed not to. And yes, blueberries will float. It's normal. Don't worry about it. It is very, very normal. So is trying not to eat them. Okay, and now I'm going to fold in the whipped topping. Let's start with one of these and then we'll see if we should have another one or not. Look, it's so messy. Clearly. The only reason I put in two cups of marshmallows and then two cups of blueberries is because I wanted to. You don't have, you can put in less marshmallows, you can put in less fruit, you can put in more. It depends on what you want. Yeah, I think this might be enough with just one. Then you like slowly mix this in because you don't want it to like, you know, be all of it can come straight up liquid. Just to mix it in, so it starts to um, become one meal itself instead of like you know smooshing things together. I do like this green. It's like a teal, right? It's really pretty, and if it's blueberries. Because blueberries don't make sense. They look blue on the outside. They're purple when you cook them. And when you open them, they're whitish green. Mostly white. So, why not also be green? Even though I know it's a mix of the jello and the pudding, because vanilla is not. You know, white is cream colored. Jeez. Don't forget to look around the edges of the bowls and mix downward to try and get all of it mixed together. This is where clear bowls come in handy. Yeah, most of my bowls are actually glass. Most of my dishes are glass. Should I add in the other one for cream? That's up to you. I kind of feel like I should. This is your project. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. We'll leave it with the one for now. And in two hours, if it's still not to consistency alike, then I'll add the other one. And then probably pick out on it. Um, 
And then what you do is you cover it, you store it in the fridge for two hours, and let it chill. So it can, so the je so the jello can sli uh, not solidify, congeal, because I can't remember the word. Thicken, that one. All right, so that's it. We'll be back in two hours. Bye bye. Hey, welcome back. We're, it's been two hours since we put the fluff in the fridge. Let's see how it turned out and see if we should add more cool whip. Oh, it's looking pretty thick. It's thick. Awesome. Like, <laughs> awesome. I was worried for nothing. See, this shows to prove. If you doubt yourself, you should still do it. See what happens. Maybe. <laughs> like, I don't think, I don't advise. I, I'm not sure that's the best advice there. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's like, wait, don't go speeding on the highway or doing something dumb. Because <laughs> usually if you're doubting whether you should do something, you probably shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Unless it's like cooking, then maybe it's okay. Um, I think it looks good and mixes well with just the one tub of frosting. So that was eight ounces of whipped uh, topping, not frosting. Um, and it, this is as fluffy as it is. That was with the large, yeah, the large um, box, jello. the large jello and the large pudding. So it was like two cups water of boiling water, two cups cold. Yeah. Okay, so it was like four cups of water total. So eight ounce whipped cream. Um, I'm gonna taste it real quick. Oh, that's good. Good with my standards. Um, so is that it for now? Yep. Okay, so since this is the third recipe and the last recipe that we're doing, um, just a little bit? Not right the second. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and end the video here and please like, subscribe, comment, share, try out these recipes, tell us what you think, or tell us if you've done other versions that are similar and uh thank you for watching bye 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 bye